All right, tonight I am doing two racks of baby back ribs. This recipe is inspired by the Traeger recipe of the week. About three hours ago, I pulled them out of the fridge, let them rest for a while, pulled the silver skin off the back, and also removed the vein. If you're not sure how to do that, refer to one of my other baby back rib videos. But I got them rubbed out with my favorite seasoning. I got the Traeger set to 250. I got a pan of apple juice on the Traeger. I'm gonna go ahead and cook them for three and a half hours. Okay, let's go take a look at the ribs. I believe they've been on for a little over a half hour. 35 minutes. Traeger's running at 250. Let's see what the analog says. The analog says 250 right on the nose too. Let's go ahead and take a look at them. I haven't opened it up since I started them. Of course, you can see them. I got them curved side up. And the thicker side towards the chimney. I also have a couple onions buttered and seasoned along with my apple juice. Alright, here's my new prep table. I also wanted a place to put my two burner stove slash griddle. So I went ahead and combined the two into one. Got room for propane, a little garbage can, it's on four wheels. I didn't want to go ahead and use the stove, just go ahead and pull the pin out. Rotate your top. Of course, put your pin back in, start cooking, or if you want, you can go ahead and pull the stove off there, put a cooler there, and you got a great bar area. Got my under the deck storage finished, I used some galvanized siding, and a barn roller door, got plenty of storage under there, also got electricity. Okay, and here's the charcoal table, patent pending. It's made out of 100% cedar. It's on four swivel wheels. On the left-hand side, of it, that's where you go ahead and start your charcoal. As you can see, you got plenty of space up top for cooking, complete with a seven and a half inch windscreen, onboard storage, and room for your cooking utensils. Here's your prep table. You're wondering what these are for. You gotta have a place to put your hot lid when you're cooking with a Dutch oven. Because you're gonna be looking in the oven. You want a place to put it where it's gonna stay clean. So you go ahead and just put your hot lid right up there. Works really great. I always keep a paper towel in the ovens to make sure you don't get any rust. But I've used them before to set a complete fully loaded oven on it. If I want to get one out of the heat or I'm Wanted us to get it out here, get it close to the heat. Go ahead and put a whole oven right on it. Complete with a light. We've been using this a lot lately. We've made a lot of stuff out here, getting used to the Dutch oven. Also, if you're not going to use it for Dutch ovens, you can just go ahead and use it as a regular charcoal grill. Of course, you don't have a lid for it. But I use one of my other grates out here, put it right over that, do burgers over the coals. See over here on the side, I've got a heat deflector there for when your charcoal is flaming up. Along with the ribs, I'm going to be doing roasted vegetables out here. I'll use the biggest oven I have, that one there. And what I'll do is just basically put the coals across the top of it. All my vegetables cut up just like I'm going to do in the oven in the house. Oil them up, season them up, put them in the oven, and then I'm going to go ahead and cover it with coals on top. Creating a kind of a broil effect. Dutch ovens are versatile. You can do a lot of cooking in them, just pretend they're an oven. Whatever you can cook in the oven in the house, you can cook in a Dutch oven outside. I like to use charcoal. Charcoal you can get cheap nowadays.
got three different size ovens. I got a, what is this one, 12. I got another Lodge, which is a 10. And then I got a Cabela, which is also a 10. They both say they're 10s. Look at the difference in size. The Cabela one, you flip upside down, makes a really nice griddle. But it also has that little notch in there, also in the pot, to allow for a thermostat in it. So that oven will cook dry with that in there. It doesn't seal up as nice. Versus the Lodge, you got stuff stored in there too. But the Lodge does not have that. It doesn't make as good as a griddle, but it doesn't steam away like the Cabela. Dutch ovens. Cooked with them in Boy Scouts and I got reintroduced to them about a year ago. You buy an oven it should last you a lifetime as long as you don't thermal shock it. Never use soap with them. Hot water and if something's really stuck let it soak with hot water then use kosher salt in the brush. And if you really have to do it put it in the oven, put it on self-cleaning, cook the thing completely clean and then re-season it. And reseasoning is not that big of a problem. Let's go ahead and put the oven in, Dutch oven in your oven in the house. Heat it up to like 350 degrees for, I don't know, a good half hour. Pull the oven out, rub it down with some lard, let it cool, put it back in the oven, reheat it up, rub it down with some lard, do that two or three times, and it should be reseasoned. But sometimes, like my cast iron pans in the house, I won't even use water with them. If I'm making eggs and bacon, I will just wipe them out. All right, I made another table over here also. It's got a 100% cedar. It's got polyurethane, five coats on it, outdoor polyurethane. I also have a low voltage light hooked up to it. It's controlled by the switch on the side here, along with an outlet. That's a 25 foot low temp cord, so it should stay flexible. Got a shelf below. One side over here has two wheels. This side has the handle, so I can roll it around easily. What I do with it when I need a more food prep area or food service area, I'll go ahead and move this table down to the lower patio there and put it up next to my other prep table. We got plenty of space for all the food and plates and everything else. All right, I got my charcoal going good here. Let me go ahead and get my roasted vegetables going. I got my potatoes and carrots cut up here with some olive oil, some thyme, and some other seasoning. I also got one red pepper, half a poblano, and two yellow onions that I'll put in a little towards the end of the cooking. So I'm going to go ahead and get the Dutch oven set up. I'm going to go ahead and just put the coals across the top of the oven. Alright, I think we're coming up on the 2 hour and 45 minute mark. It just started to rain a little bit. I just went ahead and flipped the racks probably about a half hour ago. Also, I had to improvise a little bit here on the Dutch oven, keep the rain off it. I just have the coals across the top. I'm gonna roast those vegetables. All right, here the ribs are after about four hours. We had a little rain, so I went a little longer. There the roasted vegetables are. <laughs> 